and welcome to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys. Got a bit of news, got some questions coming up in today's video. There is plenty to discuss because with Barcelona, as I say time and time again, there is never a dull day. And believe me, today, plenty on the agenda. But I want to start first and foremost with some brilliant news from the end of the weekend because of course Barcelona got the job done against Atafe. They're closing the gap to Real Madrid and then on Sunday evening Real faced Celta at home on what on paper looked like a game they would be winning with Celta there languishing towards the bottom of the table. But Celta took the lead there through the Russian striker Smolov, his first goal and it was a brilliantly taken goal too. Real then responded though through Tony Kroos and Sergio Ramos put them ahead in the second half with a penalty kick, but just a few minutes from time, a stunning, it was a brilliant, brilliant pass there from Denny Suarez into the path of Santi Mina, and again, another brilliant finish, which on the day meant that Celta took points off Real, and now we are just one point back there in the league table, just behind Real Madrid, and with El Clasico less than two weeks away, that could be significant. We move closer. And I also want to bring you some good news there on the Barcelona emergency signing front. As we all know, we are anxiously awaiting Barcelona. They're bringing in somebody to reinforce the forward positions. And good news is that this morning, the Spanish Federation have given Barcelona the full approval there to go and make an emergency signing from La Liga. Now what happens from here is the Barcelona will have 15 days to bring in a forward of their choice. Now, according to reports, of course, Angel Rodriguez has been heavily linked to Barcelona. He scored at the weekend a wonderful goal against us, and he also didn't celebrate that much as well, which may be significant. But according to reports coming out this morning, a rather strange link here to Martin Braithwaite of Leganes, which I think there would be a strange road to go down. I'd much rather stay there on the front of Angel Rodriguez. You know what you're getting. He's a number nine. He's the right profile in terms of somebody there who can be a vocal point of our attack. He's cheap. We can't obviously afford to spend big money, as I'm going to come on to in a minute when we talk about financial fair play. But in terms of Martin Braithwaite, I wouldn't go down that road personally, but 15 days now, Barcelona have to act. But before we do move on to all of that stuff, I do want to talk about Usman Dembele, of course, the man that we're trying to replace in this emergency signing window. And I want to talk about Dembele because so many people asked me questions yesterday about Dembele. Will he realise his potential? Will he stay at Barcelona beyond the summer? Is he somebody there who can make it again as a top level player through all of these injuries? And I think there, it's so so difficult with Dembele. And it's really difficult for me to actually come here and say, yes, he is going to realise that potential. Because quite frankly right now, you just don't know. He's got so much ability. I do believe that he was really ready to come back this time. He was putting everything there into his recovery and yet now, another setback. Now what I will say is this. He's going to miss the rest of the season. He's out of course for six months there. A serious serious blow for him. But I don't see him leaving in the summer. I don't see him leaving because quite frankly, who's going to sign him? Who is going to sign somebody there who's barely played this season? Barcelona would still demand their a pretty decent transfer fee and I don't see that happening. I think now realistically we've got to look at Dembele and say right come the summer you've got a pre-season there after you recover from that problem and then we can get you back on the pitch and next season could be the one for you but again we have said that before of Dembele we said that coming into this season and it hasn't happened. There's nothing more that I would love to see him go out there and prove that again he can be the player that we spent so much money on but right now, we're just going to have to wait and see. Because with Dembele, sadly, unfortunately, he's been incredibly unlucky. There's just no guarantees. And another topic that you guys certainly wanted me to discuss, a number of questions on this as well, all surrounding Manchester City and that incredible, it was breaking news at the end of last week, that they've been banned for the next two seasons in the Champions League. Now, when that came out, that was massive. I mean, that is big, big news there. UEFA banning them from the competition over F. FP. Now that's financial fair play. What does that all mean? What did Man City do wrong? And most importantly, are Barcelona going to be at risk from the same sort of thing if we keep spending money? And is it going to happen to anyone else? And what I would say about that is this. Number one, what Manchester City did, I think there is different to what we're seeing anywhere in Europe, possibly with the exception of Paris Saint-Germain, who I think have been on the borderline with the money they've been injecting into the club. But what Man City did so, so wrong was they didn't only spend 
more than they earn because that's what you have to do as a top club right now. You can only spend money on what you bring in. If you've got revenue coming in, if you've got sponsorships, if you're winning league titles and all that kind of stuff, you can then bring in players that match that kind of status. But what Man City did really, really badly was that they actually there exaggerated their sponsorship deals. And not only that, but the sponsorship deal there they claimed they were getting from Etihad was partly funded by their own owner. And that is the real problem there, that Man City are basically directly injected money into their own club and trying to get around FFP by doing that. And that was the problem. That's why UEFA have acted. And that's why, to be perfectly honest, I don't see that ban being overturned. It's going to be interesting now. There's going to be many, many appeals, but we're just going to have to wait and see. But on the front of Barcelona, I think here it would be a different kind of story because obviously we don't have an owner. We don't have somebody who's pumping money into the club. What we do have is big, big sponsorship. We've got much, much more revenue coming in than somebody like Manchester City. We've got much more of a global fan base, which is certainly a big, big help to the club. But I think what you're seeing now is UEFA really clamping down, really being strict. And that's why, to be honest, in the summer, we couldn't bring in Neymar. We couldn't now go and get Lataro Martinez in January. We may have the money somewhere to do it, but it wouldn't comply with FFP. And that's why right now we are restricted in what we can do. We do have to be careful because, as you can see, UEFA... They are coming down hard, and we don't want to be out of the Champions League. That would be terrible. But now we do move on to the big news of the day, and it certainly is big, big news there spreading in the Spanish media. And believe me, when this story came out this morning, it went from one source to another, and it spread like absolute wildfire. Because according to Sir, which is who broke the story originally, they say that Barcelona, and in particular there, the Barcelona board, hired the services of a social media company to help protect Bartomeu's reputation and damage, not only protect his image, but also their damage, the image of other key members of the club. In particular there, they've referenced a number of posts on both Facebook and also on Twitter, along with other social media there, and they say basically that posts have been published to try to tarnish the reputation of key players there, such as Lionel Messi, such as Gerard Piquet. They've also said there that they've tried to spread sort of negative reports with regards to Pep Guardiola, Xavi Hernandez, Carlos Puyol, as well as tried to tarnish the reputation there a possible candidates for presidency in the future, such as Victor Font, Jean Laporta, and also Benedito. And Benedito himself has been very, very vocal on what he's seen so far. He said the club have to act. They've got to come out. They've got to address these rumours. They've got to say yes. You know, they've got to own up to it if it's true. And I think that's what we have to see right now. We've got to see some transparency. Also, Victor Font has been vocal as well. He said this is not a good thing to see. What we're actually seeing here, if these rumours are true, is that Barcelona have used the money from the club to actually there go about protecting the image of its president. Because you think about Barcelona right now, we're scrapping around for a centre forward. We got basically no money to spend in the transfer market, yet we're saying here that a company has actually been hired on social media to try and protect the image there of the board with their time coming to an end. And right now, certainly, there is pressure certainly on social media coming from Benedito, coming from Victor Font. Everybody wants to try and push here for elections coming in the summer and certainly at the club, these reports have not gone unnoticed. They've now released an official statement responding to everything we've heard so far on social media. They say, with regards to the information published today about the contracting of a company dedicated to creating opinion on social media with a view to damaging the image of third parties related directly or indirectly with the club, they roundly deny any relationship and furthermore contract in the services there linked to social media accounts that are broadcast negative or disparaging messages related to any person. They also say there that I3 Ventures, that's the service provider there, that was linked to those sort of stories. They've got no relationship with the accounts mentioned, and if a relationship was to come to light, the club would immediately end their contractual agreement and bring about necessary legal action. Barcelona also confirmed that it has services contracted relating to monitoring social media with the aim of analysing both positive and negative messages about the organised in itself. With the contracting of these services, the club is attempting to look after and preserve its reputation as well as those related to the club, sponsors, players, board members and supporters club members. As far as the protection of this reputation is a fundamental element and responsibility for those who work for the organisation. And finally, the club demands an immediate reciprocation of the information published and reserves the right to exercise legal action against those who continue to 
to implicate the club in such practices. So clearly there, Barcelona well and truly denying all of those reports. And we're going to have to wait and see now what comes back. Because I would assume there, those who publish the reports, who clearly believe that things have been happening behind the scenes with the club, it'll be interesting to see now what happens from here. The club have denied it, but let's wait and see what comes to light. But I do want to leave you here with a very important question and I want to finish here on this note because I want to know your thoughts on this, guys. Very interesting there. Should we rest Lionel Messi against Eibar this coming Saturday? Now, Saturday, of course, is a big La Liga game for us to keep the pressure on Real at the top of the league. But of course, then after that, we're into the Champions League games. Should we rest Messi in that game at the weekend at the Camp Nou and why? Because I personally believe, although I can understand why we would rest him and I could understand there that giving Messi some vital rest for that Napoli game would be very beneficial but at the same time the fact that he hasn't scored recently I think that plays into it and I think that A-bar game at the weekend it's a brilliant game there for Messi you would feel to get back on the score sheet to get that confidence going again and I just don't really want him there to be going into that Napoli game with a scoreless run he will want to be going into that game full of confidence really believing in himself and actually there firing on all cylinders and that's why for me at least from the start I wouldn't think about resting him if he scores if he's got one two maybe Maybe you can take him off. That doesn't really happen with Messi usually. But I just think there, he'll be the one to decide. He knows his body. He knows how he's feeling. He knows how he's feeling mentally as well. And I think it's interesting there to see what you guys believe. Should we rest Messi? Should he not play against Debar ahead of the Napoli game? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, please do let me know on everything that we have discussed in today's video. Thank you as always for watching, guys. Thank you for your incredible support. I'll be back soon, of course, with some Champions League predictions. That's coming up soon. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca.